I'm Ken Lang, and I farm here at Orchard Hill Farm with my wife Martha and my daughter Ellen now. Martha and I started farming here on part of her family's farm in 1979. We switched to being a, a market garden operation, uh, community shared agriculture for, oh, it maxed out at about 250 members, about seven acres of vegetables for that. We started out sort of sympathetic to organic farming, but we switched to uh, organic farm and became certified oh, in about 1990. The vegetable production sort of suited my passions uh, and, and my wife's too. She's a very good farmer in her own right and a very good marketer, uh, so we made a good team. In uh, 2020, partly because I had slowed down, semi-retired, I had some time to take on the whole Living Labs project through EFAO and the Ontario Soil and Crop and funded by Agriculture Canada. And I was a typical farmer, I'd try you know, different things and either I wouldn't have a control or I'd never get around to doing the harvesting and, and calculating the yields. And I had done a few farmer-led research projects under Sarah Larson at EFAO and was sort of learning how to do sort of farmer-led research. So the Living Labs are just sort of an expansion of that. Our, our investigation was sort of focused on horticulture crops and uh, particularly developing no-till strategies for vegetable crops. 2021 was sort of a large sort of survey of different techniques and different crops and then in 22 we've narrowed it down uh, to potatoes and garlic which we had two promising techniques for. Prior to the trick with no-till is you can't expose a lot of soil. If you have bare soil those weed seeds uh, will respond to the light and they'll grow. With potatoes, we've got rid of all the, the hilling, the row cultivation. They're planted onto the flat, they're not in a raised bed, but of course it's covered with cover crop. We often plant the cover crop the first of September. You know, it's there either growing or terminated in the spring, but you want a, a lot of biomass because that's what you're using for weed control. It's that residue on the ground which is giving you the weed control through the next season. And with potatoes, it's got to last you the full season. So we're using winter rye, and we were mixing it with hairy vetch, hoping that we would alleviate some of the nitrogen tie-up that can happen with rye uh, by growing that legume. Certainly, you learn very quickly with terminating overwintering cover crops that it, it can be tricky. The timing has to be just right. The timing for termination of the two cover crops don't coincide exactly, so we discovered that flail mowing was a little more reliable. But it has a drawback in that when you chop things up into little pieces, then they break down faster. And the mixture may lead to weed control breakdown a little early in the season because you've got all that nitrogen from the legume, uh, the hairy vetch in this case, uh, enabling the breakdown of that rye a little quicker. And I think we've experienced that this year, so it's been a bit of a challenge. You can actually plant the potatoes uh, about three weeks before your termination date for the rye and vetch into the standing rye and vetch. Makes the planting a little easier because when you, if you roll it or were to flail mow it before you plant it, then your machinery has to deal with all that residue on the ground and it's a lot. And then when your first potatoes start to emerge, you can go in and uh, either roll or, or flail mow. And then you've got, you know, a good mulch on the ground. And last year we had excellent weed control and excellent production, of, you know, 30,000 pounds per acre. And my planter um, has limitations. Like we have an RJ transplanter. It's really for transplanting vegetable, like plugs, tapered plugs. Uh, there is no no-till potato planter out there that you can buy, that such machinery doesn't exist. And that's part of the barrier to having, you know, other commercial growers play with this technique is uh, they're pretty much dependent on developing the machinery themselves. It is going to be sort of a rotational no-till, so you're going to go in once in a while uh, with some tillage, clean things up so you can plant a cover crop, which then you might be able to plant no-till into. So you're reducing the tillage to a large extent. You know, we have to work hard to, to keep 3% organic matter in the field. The fence row besides that's undisturbed has 6%. So, you know, if we had 6% organic matter in that vegetable field, it would be a lot easier to manage them, particularly organically. You know, you have better water infiltration, you can hold more water in the soil, uh, you can hold more nutrients, the nutrients are gonna cycle better. Um, you know, you're probably gonna have healthier plants because you've got 
you know, a micro population on the roots to, to take the place of, you know, pathogenic ones. I'm really quite convinced that healthy soil gives you healthy crops which result in healthy people and a healthy planet. It makes a huge difference if farmers take their skills and use those skills to grow plants that take carbon out of the air and put it in the soil.